Hi, uh, my name is Ian Battersby. I'm one of the clinicians at Davies, and uh, we've been putting together a series of little videos, um, doing walkthroughs uh, through parts of the practice that you know, uh, the clinicians work in, um, and we can't give you access to on a daily basis. Um, as you know, the practice is split up into a variety of different areas. So there's the diagnostics, there's the kenneling, and then today we're going to talk about the theatre area. So if your pet um, is admitted after a consultation for an operation, these are the parts uh, of the practice that uh, they'll be uh, working their way through. So the first part that we're going to talk about is the theatre induction. So when we talk about induction, it's induction of anaesthesia in preparation for the surgery. So each patient has an individual anaesthesia plan created by our anaesthetists and together with our veterinary nurses, um, preparations are made for each individual patient. As you can see, there's two stations in this room. Um, there's no patients here at the moment but all the preparations are being made uh, prior to um, them arriving so that everything can move as quickly as possible. Now, once they're asleep, they're clipped and prepped for surgery and all the monitoring equipment is attached and then the patients then move into theatre and we're just going to move around now to show you where they go. So the patients move up the corridor on a trolley, anaesthetised and with all the monitoring in place. And, um, just through this door here at the end is where they're going to move into theatre. However, um, probably what I should point out as well why we're here is this room. And we'll just go in here. So this is our x-ray suite. Um, uh, so uh, as most modern veterinary practices now, we have digital x-ray. And uh, all patients that are undergoing uh, x-rays generally are anaesthetised or heavily sedated. So you know, there's again a, an array of uh, monitoring equipment to make sure that they're safe and there's no com complications while they're anaesthetised. Now the reason why we've located this room so close to the theatre is that a lot of the operations, particularly orthopaedic operations, need post-operative x-rays. So it's very quick and easy for the patient to come out of theatre, move into the x-ray suite, have x-rays, make sure the plates are all in the right place before we wake them up. As I was saying before, the patient will move through here on a trolley and then they're going to go through this door into our theatre prep. And before I go into there, I need to get changed into theatre scrubs, so I'll be with you in about 10 seconds. So after a quick change, we're now in theatre prep. So this, you know, our patients have moved through on the trolley anaesthetised into the theatres. We've got four theatres on this side of the practice. Um, but this area is also quite important, the prep area, because there's a lot of activity that goes on in here um, you know, whilst the animals are uh, in surgery but also prior to them uh, entering the theatre area. So first of all we've got our scrub sinks, so um, allowing the surgeons to surgically prep their hands before gloving up um, and then as well as gloving up they'll move into sterile grounds. Just above it is quite an important bit of theatre prep. This is the uh, operations list and scheduling that allows our theatre supervisors to coordinate how patients move through the practice and also in using all the different theatres at different times. Of course, any theatre needs a crash trolley, um, which is here. So this is for those hopefully rare situations where complications happen and uh, a patient might uh, arrest. So this equipment's on close hand. We've got a defibrillator here. So we've passed two theatres already. Um, we're passing some large number of cupboards with all the different types of surgical equipment used for orthopaedics and soft tissue surgery and neuro neurological surgeries. And there's another surgery uh, theatre suite here uh, that's got an operation going on at the moment. Um, theatre One hasn't got a patient in there at the moment, so we're just gonna take that opportunity to go inside and show you um, the layout of these rooms. These theatres are very similar to probably some of the images that you see on some of the dramas such as Casualty. You know, a lot of the equipment that we use um, is used in human uh, hospitals. So of course, each theatre needs a theatre table that can move up and down so to allow the surgeon to operate at a comfortable uh, height. We've got the theatre lights uh, to ensure that visual, you know, the, the lighting of the operating, uh, uh, the area that they're operating on is, is optimal. We've got all the anaesthesia equipment. Um, most of our theatres have ventilators to allow complex surgeries done on the chest. And then a massive array of you know, ECG monitoring equipment um, that you know, is, is, is vital in the kind of surgeries that we do here. Um, in addition, we have um, TV monitors to allow surgeons to put up images 
that have been taken from MRI scans and CT scans so that it can refer to them during the operation just to ensure that uh, they've got everything, uh, all the information they need to know and at hand. So we'll now just move um, to the final part of theatre prep. So um, like most theatre preps, um, they have an area for dirty equipment, so an when, after the operation uh, has occurred, the equipment needs to be cleaned, has its initial uh, scrub here before moving into our sterile supplies area that we're just going to go and have a little look at now. So that's actually a pull door rather than a push door. So as we move into here, you can see that um, you know, it's quite a clean area. The equipment moves through uh, into the sterile supplies area and uh, it's initially inspected to make sure that the, uh, the first clean has gone well and then the equipment is packed into uh, two sets of envelopes um, uh, prior to packing for sterilisation and an example of those envelopes is here. So this is a, I'm an internal medicine clinician so this is not quite my area but I understand those are rongeurs that are used in spinal surgery. And on the back of the envelope, there's a series of indicators that turn brown once we know that the sterilisation process has gone correctly and this equipment is safe to use in an operation. So this equipment is then packed either in a, in a cage or in one of these big boxes here. Uh, this has a, a whole array of different kit before play, being placed in either one of these two very large autoclaves. Um, and they undergo a, a sterilisation process and then once uh, that's complete, we can then use it uh, in, in the cases that are in the theatre. So um, this is the main theatre prep and the main theatre area, but we have one theatre that sets, is set out on its own over in the, next to the diagnostics area, and that's the ophthalmology theatre that we're just gonna go and have a quick look at now. So we've now moved over from the main theatre area to um, the ophthalmology theatre, which is theatre five, which stands alone and is next to the diagnostics area. Um, and I'm just going to do a brief talk through this area. So um, just around the corner we have our anaesthesia equipment and induction area that is specific for the ophthalmology theatre. So this is uh, the surgeon's scrub sink so they can prepare prior to operating and then glove and gown. And then it's a very short journey in this uh, setup into the ophthalmology uh, operating suite. So one piece of equipment that's unique to this theatre is uh, the operating microscope. Um, this is a vitally important bit of equipment for some of the very intricate uh, surgeries that the uh, ophthalmologists perform um, involving the inside of the eye, so this is primarily things like cataract surgery. Um, there are other specialist bits of equipment that we use in the other theatres that uh, are moved between the theatres, um, uh, an example of which would be the fluoroscopy unit. Um, that's a bit of equipment that allows us to take intraoperative x-rays and moving x-rays during surgeries such as uh, fracture repairs, spinal surgeries, um, but also uh, some of the interventional radiology procedures where we put stents in uh, kidneys but also uh, balloon dilations in, in hearts and things like that. 